They are among the most tragic characters in Middle-earth. In allegiance to their father, they would swear a terrible oath, one that would drive them into exile, drive them to kill their fellow elves, and for most, drive them to their deaths. Today on Nerd of the Rings, we begin our series on the Sons of Feanor with the life and travels of his eldest, Maedhros. Maedhros is born sometime during the years of the trees in Valinor, to Feanor and his wife, Nerdanel. When Feanor is banished from Valinor in the years of the trees 1490, Maedhros, his mother, and six younger brothers go with Feanor to their new home of Formenos. Five years of the trees later, Morgoth would destroy the two trees and come to Formenos while Feanor and his family are in Valinor to make amends with the Valar and the other elves. Remaining behind at Formenos is Finwë, Feanor's father and the grandfather of Maitros. Morgoth kills Finwë and steals Feanor's prized Silmarils before fleeing to Middle-earth. Led by their father, Maithros and his six brothers swear the dreadful Oath of Feanor that would come to rule over their lives and bring great evil to the world. Be he foe or friend, be he foul or clean, brood of Morgoth or bright Vala, Elda or Maya or Afterkama, man yet unborn upon Middle-earth, neither law nor love nor league of swords, dread nor danger, not doom itself, shall defend him from Feanor and Feanor's kin. Whoso hideth, or hoardeth, or in hand taketh, finding keepeth, or afar casteth, a Silmaril, this swear we all. Death we will deal him ere day's ending. Woe unto world's end, our word hear thou, Eru All-Father, to the everlasting, darkness doom us if our deed faileth. On the holy mountain hear in witness, and our vow remember, Manwe and Varda. Having resolved to pursue Morgoth, Maithros accompanies his father to the havens of Alqualonde. It is there that the Teleri elves dwell, who are famous for their shipbuilding. The Noldor, who followed Feanor and his sons, arrive at the Haven in an attempt to persuade the Teleri to give them their ships. Knowing this was against the will of the Valar, the Teleri decline and attempt to persuade the Noldor to stay in the Blessed Realm. Angered by this response, the Noldor begin taking the ships by force. The situation quickly escalates and a battle breaks out. In the end, many Teleri are slain in the first kinslaying of Elves against Elves. Feanor and his sons take their people on the Teleri ships and sail to the coast of Middle-earth. While the host of Fingolfin is left behind, Maithros is under the assumption that his father intends to return the ships for a second voyage with the remaining Noldor, including Maithros's cousin and friend, Fingon. Instead, Feanor deems the house of Fingolfin to be unworthy and burns the ships leaving Fingolfin to lead his people across the dangerous, frozen lands of the Helcaraxe. Maithros is angered by this, and he alone of all his brothers refuses to take part in the burning of the ships. The host of Feanor would travel inland and take part in the first battle of the Noldor in Beleriand, the Dagor Nuin Giliath, the battle under stars for it was prior to the creation of the sun and the moon. Feanor is mortally wounded in this battle by Gothmog and the Balrogs of Morgoth. With his father's death, Maithros inherits the role of King of the Noldor. However, his reign would be short-lived, for Morgoth would send an embassy to Maithros, claiming to offer a goodwill gift of one of the Silmarils. Expecting deception, Maithros pretends to accept this offer of treating with the Dark Lord, while bringing a force of his own. However, the host of Morgoth is too great, and Maithros is captured by Morgoth's forces. He is taken back to the dark fortress of Angband, where he is hung by the wrist of his right hand 
aside the mountains of Thangorodrim. There he would hang until the fifth year of the First Age, a period of at least 24 years. In that year, help would come unlooked for from the house of Fingolfin. With the help of Thorondor, the great Lord of the Eagles, his friend Fingon comes to his rescue. Fingon is forced to cut off Mithros's right hand to free him from his chains, before bearing him away to safety. In his thanks for his rescue, and in remorse for the abandonment of Fingon's family, Mithros renounces his claim to the kingship of the Noldor. Despite the disapproval of his brothers, Mithros is king no longer, and the title passes to his uncle and Fingon's father, Fingolfin. Knowing that this change in leadership would likely lead his brothers to create strife, Mithros moves his family and followers to the eastern lands of Beleriand, leaving the lands of Hithlum to the house of Fingolfin. Mithros would rule the lands around the hill of Himring, where he would build a fortress, and the lands would come to be known as the March of Mithros. Years later, in 60 of the First Age, Morgoth believes the elves to be preoccupied with settling in their realms, rather than preparing their defenses. He launches an attack, with orcs pouring into the lands of Dorthonion. However, Mithros and Fingolfin were both allied and prepared. They counterattack the orcs from both the east and the west, and the armies of orcs are caught as if between hammer and anvil. This battle would come to be known as the Dagor Aglareb, the Glorious Battle, and would result in the 400-year Siege of Angband, where Morgoth's forces and fortress would be held in check. The peace would end in 455 of the First Age, with the Dagor Bragolach, the Battle of Sudden Flame, as Morgoth issues forth rivers of fire and unleashes Glaurung, the first dragon. While this would result in great destruction and loss of life for the elves all around them, Mithros and his brother Maglor fought valiantly and managed to hold the fortress of Himring. Over the coming years, Beren and Luthien would succeed in stealing a Silmaril from Morgoth's crown within his very halls. Encouraged by this news, Mithros gathers his brothers and allies to form the Union of Mithros an alliance with the purpose of bringing all their might upon Morgoth. In the east, Mithros leads his brothers and the elves of Himring, Easterlings who lived in his realm under their leader Bor, Easterlings who followed his younger brother Karanthir, and the dwarves of Belagost, led by Azagal. In the west, Fingon, who is now High King of the Noldor, leads the elves of Hithlum, the Edain of Dorloman and Brethil, elves from the southern kingdom of Nargothrond, and the late arriving force of Gondolin, led by Fingon's brother, Turgon. Mithros's plan is to take his army to Unfauglith, drawing out the armies of Morgoth. Then, Fingon would ride with his hidden western army and crush Morgoth's forces between them. However, a small force of orcs manages to provoke the western army into attacking early, and combined with the treachery of the Easterlings of Uldor, the Union of Mithros is defeated with overwhelming losses in the Nirnaeth Arnoediad, the Battle of Unnumbered Tears. Mithros and his brothers are forced to flee to Assyriand, living among the green elves of the region, as the orcs take control of Himring. With Morgoth now controlling the entire north of Beleriand, any hope of a large-scale assault against the Dark Lord is lost. The elves are now facing a steady, losing battle against the darkness of Morgoth. Over the years, the Silmaril of Beren and Luthien would remain with King Thingol of Doriath until his death. After being recovered by Beren, it would be worn by Luthien during their second life on the Isle of Tolgallon. However, Beren and Luthien would die their final death in 503, and the Silmaril is sent to their son Dior, who now ruled over his grandfather's realm of Doriath. While no elf would dare assail Luthien while she wore the Silmaril in the now Glamir necklace, the oath of Feanor awakes in the hearts of his sons when they learn that Dior 
now holds one of their father's gems. Maitros, driven by the oath he swore, is convinced by his brother, Kelegorm, that they must attack Doriath and reclaim the Silmaril. Thus, the second kinslaying comes to pass in 506. The sons of Feanor launch an attack upon the realm, and Dior kills the brothers Kelegorm, Karanthir, and Kurufin, but is killed himself in the deed. While Dior's daughter, Elwing, would escape in secret with the Silmaril, her brothers Elured and Elurin are captured by Kelegorm's servants, taken into the woods, and left to starve. Upon learning of this, Maitros searches the forest for the children, but finds no one. Their ultimate fate remains a mystery. Years later, Maitros learns that Elwing had survived the destruction of Doriath and now dwells in the havens of Sirion with the Silmaril. Though initially restraining himself, the oath compels him to act, and he sends word to the havens, demanding they turn over the jewel. Elwing and her people refuse. Once again, the sons of Feanor attack fellow elves in the third kinslaying. In 538, they sack the havens of Sirion, and while Maitros and Maglor have the military victory, their brothers Emrod and Amras are killed in the attack, and Elwing throws herself into the sea with the Silmaril. In the aftermath, Maitros and Maglor come upon Elwing's twin sons, Elrond and Elros. Though they first take them as captives, love grows between the twins and Maglor, who becomes like a father to them. As for Elwing, she would come to her husband, Earendil, and he would bear the Silmaril to Valinor. The Valar would bless his ship, and he would fly it through the sky with the Silmaril upon his brow. Thus, the star of Earendil is born. And when this new star was seen at evening, Maitros spoke to Maglor, his brother, and he said, Surely that is a Silmaril that shines now in the west. And Maglor answered, If it be truly the Silmaril which we saw cast into the sea that rises again by the power of the Vala, then let us be glad, for its glory is seen now by many, and is yet secure from all evil. Then the elves looked up and despaired no longer, but Morgoth, was filled with doubt. The Silmaril out of their reach, Maitros and Maglor are left to dwell in Middle-earth with the little time left to them, they alone of their seven brothers yet surviving. Earendil's voyage also brings the wrath of the Valar upon Morgoth, and in 587, after a 42-year war, the Dark Lord is defeated and cast into the void. The remaining two Silmarils are taken from him, and one last time, the sons of Feanor demand the Silmarils, this time from Aonwe, one of the Maiar, and Herald of Manwe. Aonwe responds that due to their evil deeds in pursuing their oath, they had no longer any right to the Silmarils. After a brief debate on whether they must pursue their oath they swore in Iluvatar's name, the brothers sneak into the camp, kill the guards, and grab the Silmarils. The entire camp is alerted to their presence, and they are surrounded, prepared to die. Aonwe, however, forbids them to be slain, letting them go whither they would. Maitros and Maglor each take a Silmaril and go their separate ways. But the jewel burned the hand of Maitros in pain unbearable, and he perceived that it was as Aonwe had said, and that his right thereto had become void and that the oath was vain. And being in anguish and despair, he cast himself into a gaping chasm filled with fire, and so ended. And the Silmaril that he bore was taken into the bosom of the earth. We don't know if Maitros was ever re-embodied, or if he, like his father, would have to wait in the halls of Mandos until the very end of the world. When Beleriand sinks into the sea at the end of the First Age, Maithros's hill becomes the island of Tolhimling, standing into the Second Age as the lone reminder of the sons of Feanor. I hope you all enjoyed this look at the life of Maithros 
but make sure you hit subscribe as I'll be covering each of the Sons of Feanor in their own videos spread throughout 2022. As always, I want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make this channel possible. Tom DeBombadil19, Listen Me the Cinda, Mandu Pandu, Andrew Carlisle, Sky Carcass, Slide Belts, Dane Ragnarsson, Salim Rahman, Zetrock, Berto Berg, Grand Strategy Nerd, Graham Derricott, The Dark Haired One, Wyland, Michael Wu, and Debbie. If you enjoyed the artwork in this video, check out the artists in the description and purchase prints of their great work for yourself. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.